Welcome to the Dream Journal. From the studios of KSQD in Santa Cruz, the Dream Journal is a weekly show where we explore the power of nighttime dreams through conversations with dream experts and with you. So there's no those bottomless. Time is keenly found. We are not alone. Water over stone. Even if you're by yourself. Even if you're by yourself. Today's music is called Rubicon. Is there any hope for authenticity? Today we speak with Jungian analyst Susan Schwartz, who describes her work on the imposter syndrome and the fragility of the self. I am your host, Catherine Bell of Experiential Dreamwork, and welcome to the Dream Journal. The Dream Journal is a weekly podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review. But most importantly, tell your friends. We are all about getting people to talk about the dream, and that's one way you can uh, talk, start the conversation about dreams, is what podcasts are you listening to lately? Archives are also available at Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and you can find them also at ksqd.org slash the dash dream dash journal. We are also on PRX, so if you subscribe to the Public Radio Exchange, look up the Dream Journal and consider contacting your local community radio station about syndicating the Dream Journal or even buying one or two shows here and there. We'd love to get on the air to get more people talking about their dreams. I had a dream yesterday morning. Um, there was couple different segments but what's really talking about sticking in my mind right now is a moment when I am on a sled and I have uh, my arms around this, this 10 year old boy uh, well he says he's 10 years old but he's all, he looks more like four or five so that's an interesting mismatch but we're sliding down this big gradual slope at a stunning sunset and the, the, the land is flat and wide uh, in all directions and then off to the left and ahead of us is the ocean and I can see all the ocean reflecting back the amazing colors of the sky and even the, the ground, even the land around us has these glints of those amazing magenta and orange sunset colors and, and uh, I have this, my arms wrapped around the boy and there's just something about connection um, with that part of myself, whatever that might be. And I'm really reveling in that image. Our guest will be Susan E. Schwartz, PhD, trained in Zurich as a Jungian analyst, and she is also a clinical psychologist. She presents in the U.S. and worldwide. Her book, The Absent Father Effect on Daughters, has been translated into several languages. Her newest book is also published by Routledge and is entitled The Imposter Syndrome and the As-If Personality Fragility of the Self. Her webpage is Susan, Susan Schwartz, PhD.com. Good morning, Dr. Schwartz. Hi. Your work is about the imposter syndrome. And you know this is something that's really important to me because one of my uh, big things about dreaming and uh, really about life is is authenticity and how can I be my authentic self because there's so many times when I'm sort of off in the realm of fake it till you make it and uh, feeling like right. an imposter and I want well, to just jump right into the topic what's that for you well you just said a tremendous amount of things that mm. totally fit mm. with the imposter syndrome, and the as-if personality. Mm -hmm. um, faking it till you make it 
is one way of operating, but it's very tedious. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. What about being real? Mm-hmm. And wouldn't that be the easiest way? And you would, you, not just you, but all of us, yep. would find out that, in fact, being real saves energy, mm. is actually educational, and we find out that it is probably much more fun, basically. Sounds, and, sounds right to me, but why is it yeah. so hard? Well, it seems like that would be the easiest route to just say it like it is. What's so difficult it, about it, that? Uh, <laughs> I, you're right. Huh. It totally seems like it would be easiest. However, we learn through our culture, family, society, transgenerationally, uh, people pressure us to be something that we are not. And we learn very early that being somebody else is sometimes preferred, even if those people that reinforce the somebody else, they don't mean it necessarily, but they kind of do. Oh. In the sense that, yeah, in the <laughs> sense that when you're, li- right, when you're little, yeah. you're supposed to make that, gr- that tree green. <laughs> right. But Right? But what if you want to make it purple? Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, you know, it's, as we're laughing, it totally fits, doesn't it? Mm. It's much more fun if it's purple, but we learn, sadly, that we have to make it green. And yes. then mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead. it becomes, yeah, it becomes mm-hmm. even more than that. It becomes this, it becomes that, it becomes how to act, how to dress, how to walk, how to think. Mm. And it becomes very narrow. Right. Okay. So there's early forces that really put us in uh, into like conformity and expectations. Uh, and uh, t- tell me what you mean by the as if personality, and how does this fit in with uh, uh, with what we're talking about here around authenticity? Well, actually, they're quite similar. Mm-hmm. Um, the as if personality is. Another way of saying the imposter syndrome, Mm -hmm. the imposter syndrome has become a popularized uh, word, but, but, or a a way of describing things. Partly I wonder if it has arisen even more from social media, Mm -hmm. because social media has given us a lot of wonderful things, but it has also given us this kind of pressure to fit in, to have a bunch of hits, to do whatever looks popular. Mm -hmm. And now we learn to Photoshop ourselves. We learn to look and sound differently than who we are. So, again, this kind of social pressure and the the popularized version of being an imposter. The phrase, as if, began with a, a Freudian psychoanalyst in the 1940s, a woman who described this as attributable to women. It's quite interesting. And she said that these women are unanalyzable, hmm. and they also are rather vapid. Oh, no. That's what she described. Isn't that awful? Oh, that's horrible. That awful? <laughs> yeah, it's, tr- it's terribly horrible. Very sexist. But then, yeah, very sexist. But then after the 1940s, she kind of dropped out of the view of the world, in a sense, and the whole as-if personality description dropped out as well. And then a Jungian analyst named Hester Solomon kind of re-brought the word back, or the phrase back, in the early 2000s, mm-hmm. and... I took that and expanded it, the as-if personality, and linked it with the imposter syndrome. So I was linking what is popular with, you know, a Jungian viewpoint, Mm -hmm. partly because I'm a Jungian analyst, Mm -hmm. but also because I think they both fit. Mm -hmm. They each describe a similar kind of thing, not a vapid personality, a full personality, mm, mm-hmm. which wants to reflect 
and bring itself out. So that's the other side of the imposter and the as if, is I'd like to take my mask off. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just thinking about these women labeled as vapid, and I'm just... It's, yeah. It's so like those poor deers. I mean, I feel like they they must be trapped in some kind of some kind of uh, mask, like you say, behind a mask. And so, maybe talk a little bit more about the idea of the masks and what that it, it take what that is about taking them off. Well, you know, we have all gone through that actual experience through COVID. Mm. So yeah. we were supposed to wear masks, and when we took the mask off, people saw our entire face. And and I must say myself, I didn't see people uh, who felt that they had to wear a mask. I said, if you have to wear a mask, we will do a Zoom because I want to see your whole face. Mm-hmm. And what that meant to me was a revealing of the entire self, the expressive self, um, the the face of who we are. Oftentimes, a facade also represents putting a different face on. And what we want to see in the being a, a total person and learning about yourself is taking the mask off. Mm, right. Um, okay, there's... Um I mean, this is great. This is an interesting conversation. I had a little flurry of comments on my social media posts about this whole idea of the imposter syndrome. And uh, uh, people were talking about, uh, there's uh, particularly talking about um, uh, people who were starting to practice as, as psychics and then feeling like they were faking, feeling like that was a fake. And like, how do we trust ourselves, these impulses, which are sometimes not very loud. And so... Uh, you know, is there something about uh, um, how do I learn to trust my impulses, even if they're not very loud and they seem kind of strange to my mind? Uh, so I feel like an imposter. Uh, so is this what is coming up for you around this? Yeah, yeah. But you know, so you bring up a lot of Im- interesting and important pieces there. One is the trust in oneself is what you learn. As you take the mask off Uh and as you take the facades down, you learn that you're okay. You know, by the experience of being, you learn it is all right to be. So it's it's kind of a a double thing that really goes together and is essential. Those people who were mistrusting their impulses, they might question, wait a minute. Isn't it important for me to follow my impulses? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it will lead me where I really need to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yet we learn, don't follow those impulses, because it will take us, uh, what should I say, out of the collective way to be, mm. out of the way you're supposed to be, right. and maybe, maybe that's okay. Uh, maybe maybe it's quite interesting, uh, uh, right? Right, it might right. Be challenging. It's challenging the status quo, but it also might be very interesting. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I think of humans as as being uh, domesticated animals, and that we have domesticated each other. And you know, my first grade teacher, Mrs. Aronson, like had us all sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like in a new school meeting all these kids and all these this interesting uh-huh. things in the classroom and yet the teacher wanted us to um, you know save it for recess and you know these kind of ways that we learn to small in our and like I think of this as how humans are domesticated and of course mom cooking dinner you know don't bother me I'm busy that oh. we, all these ways that we learn to reject the different parts of our impulses yeah. Well, you see, look, look at what you just said. And this is where, again, we learn very early in school. Everybody sit down on their mat yep. and don't say anything, okay? And you have to eat the cookies whether you like them or not. Right? right? Yeah. The other thing is, so how do we develop our individual taste? Yeah. I don't like those cookies. Well, 
you you know they get kind of get shoved at us and the the strength that it takes to say this is me i want the different cookies mm-hmm. as w- as well as the the image of when you said about mother's cooking we could say that the parents how do we get the parents to pay attention to us and to us as we are different from what they expect us to be. Mm-hmm. And does anybody listen? So if so-and-so is busy doing this or that, the parents, mm-hmm. how do we intercede? How do we get them to pay attention to us and to us when we are doing differently than what they expect of us? Mm, right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, it's a whole pitch for be your individual self. Yeah. Well, okay, but easier said than done. Do you have some advice? Like, what is what do you recommend? Um, well, I'm going to go by some of the words that you've said, which is listen to your instincts. And if you can't, also watch your dreams. Mm. See where you stop yourself. In the day, see where your, uh, I'll use the dreams again, see where your dreams are guiding you. Mm -hmm. See what your friends say. Do they cheer you on and say, wow, that is interesting. Uh, I wouldn't do it, but that's interesting that you are. Rather than, "Uh uh-oh, you shouldn't do that because who knows why. Mm Mm-hmm. So very subtly throughout the day, one can watch oneself and see where you limit yourself through your thoughts and your feelings, where you expand yourself. I wish I could do this or that. I wish I could have this or that. Okay, make it happen. In other words, to challenge oneself Mm -hmm. to allow what you want. Okay, so you ma- you mentioned dreams. So how how would you bring in some of uh, the dream work to uh, to these ideas? You mentioned two different things to look for in dreams. Where do you stop yourself? And then also, mm-hmm. what kind of guidance is coming from your dreams? Like uh, it's interesting. I don't know. I, I don't think you got a chance to hear my dream I shared at the top of the hour. But uh, I have my I'm sliding down this. Uh, amazing sunset landscape and I have my arms around this little boy and you know for me there could be a, a bit of guidance there about embracing my uh, my child self it could be embracing your child self but it's also a male child true. self and that's true okay so it says how do you embrace the male child self of you mm-hmm. and how do you help him grow within you so how are you accessing what is different from you in a younger form to grow into a more adult form? Mm. The other piece of the dream is you are sliding down a what? Uh, it, it's just a big open landscape. I'm on some kind of a sled. I don't know if we're on rails or oh. something, but it's, it's it, I'm, we're sitting on top of something. I can't really see what it is we're on, actually. It's something like a sled you or can't. a scooter. Or... Uh, did you mention something about the sun, or did I Yeah, the sun, sun's going down. It's uh, sunset, so there's oh. amazing colors everywhere. That's one of the, the parts of the image is the amazing colors. Well, the colors... Of course, colors are so important as well and for what they symbolize, but it almost presents like a rainbow, many, Mm -hmm. many colors, so many opportunities, many choices. The sunset might represent a certain time of life. Mm -hmm. It might represent a certain, the world is... um, uh, going, to, you you know, you're going towards a, a certain direction, mm-hmm. which is different than the sunrise. It might be a sunset on a certain piece of whatever you're doing in your life, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. There might be a change. Mm-hmm. And from the sunset, of course, the moon rises. Mm-hmm. And after the moon rises and sets, the sun comes again. So it represents kind of a life cycle. Mm, that, that strikes a chord with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And, okay. It, it, so just as you said, how does somebody access themselves in the dream? Yeah. As people talk about the dream, when it strikes a chord, mm-hmm. there you go. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Strikes a chord, duh, there's the real self. Oh. When you say, all oh, right, there's the real self. There's no facade. The the mask is off. The real self is shining. Oh, that's so helpful. Yeah. Well, you know, I use that a lot around dreams. Like when you have an aha moment, like then when I feel like I'm on the right track with with understanding the dream. But I, but now you're talking about applying that to waking life as well. It's like, what is it oh, that strikes yeah. a chord with me? Oh, I love that. Exactly. exactly. And the striking the chord is like accessing... The reality of who one is, a resonance with your real being, and it provides a guide, Mm. a guidepost, Mm -hmm. a guidepost. So, you know, so your dream leaves the question, what are you going to do with that uh, child in your arms? And you don't know what you're sliding on. Something. Mm, I don't. Who knows? I I don't know. It's, uh-uh. ex- it's exciting. It doesn't. It isn't yeah. scary. Uh, well, it does eventually become scary when I realize I'm not sure how I'm going to get back. Uh, but it's fun and, yeah. and actually kind of peaceful and exhilarating at the same time at 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 first. And then I kind of, oh, interesting. Then oh. I stop myself and oh, I get s- get scared. Like, oh, how am I going to get back? Well, maybe the point is not to get back. Maybe I'm going to something new. Like you talked about the well, sunset on the on a time in my life and. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I was wondering when you said that, I was thinking as well, why do you have to go back? Right. <laughs> right. The direction of the dream is going down, but why are you wanting to go back? Mm. Going down is an interesting direction also in the dream mm. because but going down is like a psychological descent mm. into oneself. Mm-hmm. It's like understanding yourself more. It, it, when you go down, uh, when you get to the bottom, there's the ascent. So again, we're in the life cycle, mm-hmm. the down and the up. Right, well, Nothing you, wrong with down. Well, since I have a real live Jungian on the line, I wonder if I could ask you about the symbolism <laughs> of down versus up. This is something that comes up in my groups a lot. Like, you know, down is like, it can be like going deeper into myself, but sometimes I wonder if it can also be like a level of depression or, and then going up yeah. can be spiritual or it could be heady. I mean, yeah, both true. Yeah. All true. I, or what, what is your true. sense of that symbology? Yeah. Well, I, I would agree with you hmm. because I was thinking when you said about the going down, I was also thinking about depression, hmm. but I was thinking about the value of depression. Because the going down is really a going into yourself. When you're depressed, you go inside. And the going inside allows you to find your treasures hard to attain. This is what Jung says, the treasure hard to attain. It's such an interesting phrase. that, And it means you go down and then you ascend. Hmm. So it seems like your direction is like right. Interesting. The value of de- the value of depression. My goodness, I don't never thought I would hear that phrase. But I see what you mean. The going inside and yeah, uh-huh. yeah, okay. yeah. And so part of this whole taking a mask off means you're going to see the world differently. Yeah. It means your perception of you and the world are going to take a turn. And that will enrich the entire personality. If you have a mask on, you're going to be kind of stilted, and you won't allow the, not just you, but any of us, won't allow the flexibility that it takes to take the mask off. Okay. 
So, so this is kind of a persona we're talking about, right? This, these masks, this yeah. persona. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and how is this different from a shadow? Right. I mean, maybe it's, uh, see, this is. Well, I was just when you said persona, uh, I was just thinking shadow. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. But usually, the person with the imposter story and the as if personality tries to hide the shadow, mm. but the shadow is not just stuff we don't like about ourselves, it is also the pearls that we are not accessing of our potential and who we are. Mm. So the shadow, if you're hiding the shadow, how are you going to access your real self? And you know, if you think about it, those people who are like, they're perfect, you know, everything looks fine, they've got all this outer stuff in order, they're kind of boring. <laughs> Could Aren't this they? be the word vapid coming around again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have of, the perfect you know, home. I am the ideal wife. My children yeah. are perfect. And yeah. where's all that stuff churning around underneath? It's, exactly. Mm. That's what I mean. It's far more interesting when someone has all those layers, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, the stuff we think is so awful. But it actually is quite interesting because it carries questions. Where will I go with this? What do I want to do? Who am I really? And it's, the shadow carries pieces that we want to resolve inside of ourselves and understand. It, it's not to, you know, make, make everything light. Yeah. It's to say I can face the things that don't look so great but also is the potential that I need to use. Oh, like, you see, yeah. uh, sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, like, so I, I could never, uh, I could never, you know, be an artist or like, like me, I could never write a book, but, you know, uh, how well has that, that happened? That ended, this is happening. So, like, these, these are some of the pearls that hide in our shadows, you're saying, like, some of these impulses, some of these pearls in the shadow. Exactly. But, you know, even as you say, write a book. So, I mean, so I wrote this book, but it's not to say that at the beginning of writing it, I knew how it would evolve. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had ideas, but I had to pull out potential. I had to pull out the work. I had to keep with it. I didn't know what would happen. And it's like that question, I don't know, which allows us to create. Mm. Mm. And, it, you know, it's kind of paradoxical because it allows the creation, but it also faces us with, what if I can't? Right. But also, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but also, what if I can? Mm. You see? Mm. Mm. I just wanted to go one minute back to your dream. Sure. Your dream could have... A lot of potential in it mm-hmm. because the child is young and the young child represents potential the yet to be developed symbolically oh, I see. so yeah it's a very yeah. um full dream mm. the colors of the sunset are also full mm. you could say it's full of potential ah, absolutely so there's a sunset on one part of uh of who i am perhaps yeah. something new but i'm embracing something yeah. new oh. yeah Ooh, yeah this is very yeah i think so okay i think so yeah and i would say that the shadow also carries this paradox of what can be developed and also mm, what is the stuff that's getting in the way so it carries the mm-hmm. paradox okay yeah. Well, thank you. This is Dr. Susan Schwartz, and you're listening to The Dream Journal. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back. Uh, we're going to talk. I'm going to ask some more questions of, of Dr. Schwartz. Um, uh, one of the topics that I'm particularly interested in is aging, image, and illusion, like the uh, views of longevity in the modern culture. So, And then mm-hmm. also, where do I belong? There's some topics I'd like to um, open up with you, Susan. We are broadcast live from the KSQD studios in Santa Cruz and co-broadcast live in San Jose by KCXU.
This is the Dream Journal. Welcome back. Next week, we will be speaking to the host of the Web Delics podcast, Scott Mason himself. He was on uh, about in, in April, I do believe. And so, you know, you'll have a wild ride coming up. He is a uh, very dynamic speaker talking about psychedelics. So I also want to uh, say hello again to Dr. Susan Schwartz. Uh, their, your new book is called The Imposter Syndrome and the As If Personality, Fragility of the Self. And um, you've sent me, there's a discount code from the publisher Routledge. Is okay to mention that on the air, Susan? Please. Yes, please do. Okay, so the discount code, um, you just have to contact Routledge. The code is SMA. 38 and you'll get a special deal on the imposter syndrome so uh, uh dr schwartz uh we are um we were talking about this imposter syndrome and and really persona and the uh sense of self and i wanted to come uh to ask you about some of your ideas about uh um about views cultural views of longevity and like in our culture um, getting older, talk about sunset in my like in my mm-hmm. dream. <laughs> We're all mm-hmm. getting older, and it seems mm-hmm. like you know with ageism that that's uh, we got a lot of young worship in our culture. Um, what uh, what is what is all that, and is there another way to uh, to view aging? Well, I certainly hope so. Let <laughs> yeah. me tell you, but, but I do think one of the and this feeds into the imposter syndrome and the asset personality, Mm -hmm. which is our, our, the United States, youth-oriented culture, where anything above a certain age is considered a horrendous decline. Not just a decline, a horrendous decline. Mm -hmm. And I think it's related to our fears of death. Uh, We don't talk about it. We don't also do not talk about the vibrancy of aging, Mm -hmm. the vibrancy of living a complete life, the ability to keep on creating, dreaming, loving, being. And I think that the more people that realize, wait, and you see, we're all living longer than we used to. So we really have a responsibility to honor the entirety of the life cycle. I think it's debilitating to our psyches and our entire being to not pay attention to the fact that you can have a vibrant life no matter how old you are. Mm, And you can create no matter how old you are, and you can do whatever you want no matter how old you are. Well, you can't be in the Olympics. But you <laughs> right. definitely right. But you definitely can be active. You can be. You can have a body. This is the other thing that happens with ageism. Mm. You don't have a body. You know, a, someone someone said to me with all seriousness, um, "Well, don't expect anyone to see you because uh, once you get to a certain age, they're talking about themselves. Mm. Nobody sees you. Mm. No one notices. Nobody sees you." And I said. I think that's horrendous. Always be seen, noticed, not in a showy way, but be seen because you're worth looking at. Mm. You're valuable. You count. Mm -hmm. You're important. Mm -hmm. So you are absolutely right about the ageism, and that accentuates this whole deal of imposter and as-if personality. You can see it in... Now, this is not just women, but women are a little more susceptible to altering their bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the older they get, the more they do, Mm -hmm. and some of them do way too much. And it is promoted in our culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so yeah so so i mean there's there's beauty and there's also ability uh that you know as the physical ability declines like you say we're not going to be in the olympics anytime soon uh past a certain age um and then the beauty but there's also uh mental acuity which affects both men and women and it can be very uh you know i've read studies about shame and that uh there's uh we tend to have a lot of shame when we're young, especially high school, college age, when we're just finding out who mm-hmm. we are, and then we kind of, we kind of get in, uh, uh, get into a, uh, 
<clears throat> in, into a, a zone where we feel like we're we kind of know what we're doing and who we are. But then as we get older, a lot of times shame comes back in because of declines in ability and beauty and uh, and acuity, really. Yes, yes. But I'm going to challenge a little of what you said Good, because yeah. I th- okay because I think that beauty beauty uh, it's not just an inner position which it is but it is also outer Mm -hmm. and beauty is not just when you are 20 years old Mm -hmm. beauty really goes through the entire life cycle and we have learned in our culture to live with very narrow eyes so that we stop the beauty or the mental acuity at a certain age and I think it's a travesty against the potential that every person carries. And the question would also be, doesn't it make us older in the sense of with less vibrancy, less mental acuity, and in that shame, we tend to give up? Mm, yeah. Mm. Right? Right. But People, and, yeah. and, and then we lose yeah. our value to those around us because like, there's also wisdom, which is, which is you know, ascribed to the to the older folks as well and we hope we're getting wiser <laughs> and yes, but, you know, but also along with the wisdom uh-huh. creativity creativity, ah, creativity right yes because right because people here we come to dreams yeah people might say i have a dream of this and this but now i'm too old yeah. really uh-huh. what does too old mean mm. mm-hmm. listen listen to the dream Listen to the possibility that the dream is showing you. Mm. And listen, because it's your psyche. Mm. Listen to it, because then then maybe we help, little by little, change the view of the world and our Western world and the world of the United States. That's Mm. way too focused on whatever value youth is, whatever age that is, Mm -hmm. I don't know, and not valuing that the cycle of life Mm -hmm. is to be a life cycle. Mm. Yeah, And, you know, we're survivors, we older folks, we are, we survived. So we have that. We do, we do, but but you only have this quite interesting phrase, I'm going to botch it a little and paraphrase it, but he says, look at, we live to a certain whatever age, but if we're living, there's got to be a reason for it, doesn't there? Mm, oh, perfect. Yeah, the reason. Right? Yeah. Yeah, reason. So we get a purpose even as we get older. Like so, sometimes yeah. people retire and they're like, what's my purpose? Now, I I don't know. I My whole identity is tied up with the job. But how do you – is finding a purpose at, at an older age, is that any different from finding it at other ages? Or what do you – I don't think so. Yeah. I really – I don't think so. I have found in, yeah, throughout my practice um, that, you know, as an analyst, I see people way into their 80s, Mm -hmm. because uh, maybe into their 90s, maybe their whole life, Mm -hmm. because, because why not? Why not learn about who you are Mm -hmm. and feel good about who you are? And live fully who you are, but you said it also with meaning. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. Why does meaning? Go, yeah, mm. it shouldn't go away. Right. right, but you know it's harder as we get older. I don't know if it's harder, but it's like when we're younger, it's easier. Perhaps like we have a job, we have kids to raise, we have like a kind of a set role in society. Uh, but then uh, later on, those things aren't there anymore, uh, and 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 it's I guess what we're, what are we left? We were left with those impulses, and following those nudges from inside to find purpose. I think I think what we're left with yeah. is what we haven't done. Oh. So there are certain things we are each supposed to do in our life, and if we haven't done them, then we'll do them later. And I'll tell you, I would think. I'm going to ask you, because of the dream story, Um, doesn't that intensify in the dream and in the dream recall the push to find meaning throughout life? And the meaning in your life changes so that if your meaning at one point was your work, maybe your meaning later is something else. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Who's to say it's meaning less? Mm-hmm. It might be meaning full. Mm. Right, right. Uh, but then we kind of have to define it for ourselves. There is no natural uh, cultural uh, sense there in the way that having a job and raising kids is, is cultural norm for people in middle age. However, what what if, you know, what if, I mean, and this is true of a lot of people, they don't follow that norm that you just said. Yeah, true. But they, right? They've always been outside of that norm. That's true. And so in a way, they're living differently, mm-hmm. but that difference, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's like all we all have to live a little differently than what we thought we should do, so living longer gives us the opportunity to live our real self. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we, yeah, because you yeah. have to, what else you got to do? <laughs> else you got? Right? Right, yeah. right. Well, this ties in with the other question that I wanted to bring in. I think it's kind of segues naturally, is like the, the, the sense of finding where I belong. Like how is, is this tied yeah. in with uh, authenticity and at any age uh-huh. really, but maybe even right. more importantly as we age? Yeah, I mm. think it's true all the way through life. Where do I belong? Yeah. I mean, I have heard in my practice a lot of people, they can be in their 20s, they can be at any age. Where do I belong? Which really is a question of who am I? Yeah. It's not just where do I, it's where do I fit with myself, my real self, and where do I fit with others? Not in a stereotypical or lockstep way. But I will fit with other people because I'm expressive of myself. Mm. And that, in a way, the self should change through life. The persona, a shadow, all the pieces of the personality change through life, not necessarily in a downhill slide, but like, more like an accordion. Mm. It opens out. It opens out like an mm. accordion does. Say more about Mm -hmm. that. I'm going to understand that. I think the possibilities of being Uh uh, always keep on unfolding. Uh And if we are open to the change in ourselves and we don't get stuck in, I'm supposed to do this, this, and this, we will open ourselves like an accordion. Mm. We will have the courage well, it takes courage yeah. to really be open to the possibilities that are presenting us to ourselves. The other thing that you said, and I think it is important, in our culture and wisdom and aging, in many cultures, not so much in the United States, but in many cultures, the the arc of life is much more respected hmm. than it is here. Hmm. However... If each of us respect where we are in our life and live it with meaning and purpose, I think we help change things, mm. each of us, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. one by one. Well, and I certainly I've, I've read studies that, that uh, older people tend to be more happy and that they, maybe they've learned what works and what doesn't work. And so some, you know, it's not always the case. But I think it's there. There is some things I've definitely learned as I've as I've gotten older uh, that I didn't know when I was younger, and I know about myself and about the way the world works. And expectations are have changed and, and dropping dropping away of expectations. And yeah, I also think don't we model for all the people around us if we are living authentically. We model how to do it. Mm -hmm. Because actually, you don't really get um, a brochure of how to be real throughout life. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) but if you interact, right, if you interact with people, you kind of, you pick it up and you Mm -hmm. go, wow, that person is doing it. Probably I also can be real. Mm -hmm. Uh, We provide a tremendous amount, I think, of hope and desires released if we are living really ourselves with meaning and purpose through our whole life. Mm, okay, so that it all comes comes back to uh, that authenticity and, and looking for the authenticity. 
It does. I would ask answer one, ask one other thing. Yeah. That also in relation to dreams, you know, many people of no matter what age, they dream about themselves at different ages. True. I very much do that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. you've got the child in yep. your dream, <laughs> right? Who is a little boy? So you could say, "Whoa, what happened at five? Mm-hmm. And what did I stop at five that wants to be developed now?" Mm-hmm. So the dreams are a guide to keep us moving, to keep us active, not to deny aging. It's not denying it. Mm-hmm. It's working with it, working with it, well, and I, not putting, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, I, I I just was going to jump in and say I've had several dreams also of being much older than I am, and and like uh-huh. being aware that I I have I can't walk as well and and we have to be careful and I can't think as well and I and um and just to like a little sense of what that might be like. But but is it also possible that the dreams are a little bit of a not just a mirror, but that they also are a little bit of a dress rehearsal, like a preparation. Watch out for this so it doesn't happen. So if your walking is going to be a little something, yeah. then it says, mm. pay attention to it now. Mm. So that's what I mean about a mirror. They're, they're giving information and they're saying, this could happen. So I'm telling you, prepare yourself and get strong. Make sure you're strong. Make sure you're able do what you can to care about yourself. You know, they're, they're giving wisdom to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. That's uh, that's helpful. So you were talking about that as dreams also kind of provide an, an invitation. So they, they wear a, a guidance of what uh, what is coming and what, a, what do I need. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, that's what I mean. That's why I said they're so helpful because they're giving you a, a signpost along the way. This could happen, but so prepare for it so it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Or when it does, you're prepared and as strong as you can be. I think the strength that I'm talking about is not just physically. Your dream is not just talking about physically. Mm-hmm. It's also talking about psychologically. Keep your balance. Keep your strength. Keep your ability uh, so that you can have what you want. Mm-hmm. And you're prepared if that doesn't happen. Okay, I love that. So what about mm-hmm. fake it till you make it? Do I get to do that, or is that is that being un- inauthentic? <laughs> <laughs> We're both laughing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning. It takes too much energy oh, to fake it till you it. make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. what, about, what, about, what about doing real so you do make it? Oh. And then it says, What do I want to make? Mm Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it points out in that direction Mm -hmm. as well. Excellent. So thank you so much. This is uh, Dr. Susan Schwartz, and um, her book is The Imposter Syndrome and the As-If Personality, Fragility of the Self. You can get a discount if you order it through Routledge using the code SMA38. And Susan, how can folks get in touch with you? Oh, well, they can. Uh, they can go to my website, www.susanschwartzphd.com, and there are my numbers, text and phone, on there, okay. and my email. Yeah. Wonderful. So I wonder if you would like to have any final encouragements for the listeners or any final thoughts you want to get out there at the end of the show? Look at your dreams. See what they are saying. If you're living yourself really, or if you are not, and have the courage to go out side of the beaten path mm. into the path of who you really are. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan. This has been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure on my part as well. Thank you so very much. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. All right, so thank you for listening. The Dream Journal is produced at the studios of KSQD in Santa Cruz, and we are live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific. You can listen to the live stream for free at ksqd.org. The podcast is released on the Monday after the show. 
It keeps us growing when you subscribe, rate, and review. My name is Katherine Bell. You can find out about my dream coaching practice at experientialdreamwork.com. You can email me at katherine at ksqd.org. That's K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at ksqd.org. Follow Experiential Dreamwork and hashtag The Dream Journal on Facebook and Instagram to find out about upcoming shows. I'd like to thank Rick Cleffel, engineer and music creator. Also, Tony, Tony Rosamano. And the intro music you listened to was Water Over Stones, and the outro music is called Everything, both by Mood Science. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, take a minute to write down your dream and bring it to the next Dream Journal.